Hi everyone, we're at Avoya. It's Saturday morning, it's snowing, and I'm with some new friends. The yeah. Afghan snowboard team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy! We are the snowboard <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to say. Okay, you do it. Hi there. Today we're going to introduce you to an incredible group of young people and one guy who had a really massive impact on their lives. And it all started through this shared love of snowboarding. We're going to try and do it in the next 10 or so minutes. But to be honest, this could be a feature film. Hi, it's Victor Lavier. We're here in Navoya today to shred with the Afghanistan snowboard team. The Queen Nasima, Kazim, Nisar, Mushawar, Mushtaba, our friend Sorush, and Tim. So those stories started two years ago. I had the opportunity to go to Pakistan with a non-profit association called Zom Connection. And we were there at the same time as the international snowboard competition of Malam Jaba in Pakistan. Uh, so we've been coaching um, the different riders, including the Afghanistan Snowboard Federation and team. We just saw some, some guy doing some slides, some trendy tricks, and oh my god. It should be some someone else because it's not the local people can do those kind of tracks. It should be a snowboard, pro snowboarder. They only have uh, 15 snowboard in the country. They don't have any resorts. So they would train next to the road. They would train during the summer on sand dunes. Yeah! All the media had showed to them was just dust, explosion and those stuff. But the meanwhile that Almost 80% of Afghanistan is covered by mountains and you have like 7,000 height each. And we were like small community in Afghanistan away from all those other communities. I think that it was the first time they were meeting a pro snowboarder. So same, they had like so many questions and we're pretty excited to meet each other. You guys are fucking legends. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, of course we are. That's why I should come and make a movie about you guys. <laughs> of course. <laughs> During those five days we were planning uh, like an extra trip, as he said, to Afghanistan so we can enjoy the fresh border of Afghanistan. In Afghanistan we don't have any result at yeah. all. But I have been just once at Pakistan, so that was a small. So if you like compare with here, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's so much smaller right, than yeah. yeah. The main reason we started is snowboarding, so we can bring a change and tell the people of the world that Afghanistan is no longer the thing that it used to be. We're the new generation. And one morning I received a call on my iPhone and I, I could read like, I didn't know the number, but I could read Afghanistan. I was like, oh. He was the boss of the Federation saying like, okay, we need your help, Victor. You have, uh, you're one of the closest person we know at the moment in Occident. And we received death threat letters. And yeah, we we're in danger and because we've been snowboarding and now we need um, some help. Everything just changed in a, in a matter of one night. You sleep in a hope and you wake up with a different flag. And every shops were closed, no people. And that was something very shockful for me because I have never seen the place that I was living so quiet like that. Everyone was scared of what the Taliban would do with us because what they did like 20 years before was like a horror movie. They were also supporting equity between men and women in sport. Women are not belonging to the houses. They should go out. They have the same right as we do. That was the main thing that put us on the threat of the Taliban because they, anything that, that's against their strict rules, it's like a deadline for them. And they don't accept anything greater than their own rules. <laughs> It 
touch me, you know, like three to the hurt. We're all snowboarders. For me, it's my passion, my ultimate passion, my job. And for them, they are risking their life for that. So I was in Paris and I was like, okay, what can I do? So I went to the embassy because I was like a few kilometers away. So I grabbed my skateboard and just skated to the embassy. At the beginning, I was really on a mission. I was like, okay, I can't enjoy any pleasure anymore. I just want to help those kids that are, are so awesome. I'm just going to use social medias and try to know like if some people in my community like have contacts to help me because I don't know how to do that. You know, yeah. I never handled that kind of situation before. Those posts really worked out well and a few people answered and helped us. The first eight riders of the crew went in the first planes really, really, okay. really early. The U.S. Army left and pretty much the door of the country right. shut down. Yeah. And we knew it would be way harder. And we had still like at least eight of them still inside the country. As a second plan, we tried to leave the country by car, by vehicle. We went just to the border and it was really risky because you, to leave the country you have to cross those, those people, those Taliban. They were trying to stay as safe as possible and uh, at some point by different solutions we could transfer them to Pakistan. When we just stepped out of Afghanistan on the, on the plane and we stepped out, it was like a new life. I'm looking forward to see you again in our future flights. Yeah. And you're taking a breath, okay. So I just escaped the risk. No danger anymore. But what am I gonna do right now? As millions of Afghans, they were, yeah, uh, refugees in Pakistan. And they are young, they don't have any money. And the situation was getting tough. Some of the boys just decided to go back. And the car was just five minutes away from home to take them back to the border. Before the car arrived, we just received a, tag, a message that their visas are still in process and you just have to stay there, be strong. Mm. That's a hard time. Yeah. And were you ever thinking like, oh, this is too hard to do? And... Sorry? No, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Nothing was working, honestly. And we're really about to give up. But... A girl on that planet listened to a podcast by our swimming pool and she was like, from what I know, my mother, she's a lawyer for migrants and she specializes in visa applications. And from that, I contacted the mother and she was like, I love your story. I want to help those kids. I'm used to those kind of situation. No warranties, but I will try my best. A few weeks after, they received an email saying, your visa application is confirmed. You can come to France to ask for asylum. So it was a pretty crazy moment. What we have done for one and a half year worked out and all the crew, the 15 of them, are going to be safe. I was super happy. Then I forgot everything. No problem. You, have, you yeah. can see the future, the yeah. solution, yeah. Yeah, because now the problem is solved. Mm -hmm. And they showed up in Paris. The doors of friends opened up and our friends arrived. And it was a pretty crazy moment. Uh, when we arrive at the Paris, and then when I meet uh, the groups that all the time helped us, I was so happy to meet them, a new life, a new place, new culture. We landed in uh, Paris for the first time. You know, uh, I, I actually I couldn't believe it. It was like it was like a dream. It, it's a crazy story. It's uh, amazing, full of feelings and uh, sacrifices and. Uh, Carriage. It's the beginning of their new life and beautiful life. And now they're working full time and learning French, and most important to me, there's nobody. What I love most about the snow is the freedom that it gives me. As long as you see the whiteness around, you can go, you can do whatever you want, still have the feeling as, as long as you're going, you have the happy feeling inside you. The real freedom for us. You're kind of, you know, forgetting everything. So you're just focusing on snow, having fun, you know, riding. Yeah, it's kind of really incredible. We came here 
in December, more than one and a half year after the beginning of their story, to snowboard together in the end here in Nagoya, my home resort, and it was just so amazing. I know snowboarding how like just going right and left then he started teaching me like how to move my hands, how to move my body, my legs. Salomon now for them boards, boots, bindings for all the crew and riders for refugees give get them clothes. <laughs> this first winter I did more of a snowboarding than I have ever done in my whole life. Okay, it's a grab training. They launch off everything. Sometimes they land, sometimes no. Uh -oh. So don't throw your snowboard in the snow. Don't run into each other. Please. If I could have these, all these opportunities, all these facilities back there in my country, mm -hmm. I would compete with Victor David. That was for me like final point of that whole mission. And the dad, the coach, the brother, <laughs> I don't know, a bit of everything. He will be always our hero, yeah, a I real know. hero, not like a sports hero. For sure, like, that influence came from my mother. She's a really open-minded person. She helped migrants in the past. She's probably the most influent person in my life. Those writers got treated because they were writers too. And that really affected me and that gave me the motivation, I think, to help. And if you are down to open your doors and get the motivation to help. I think like some pretty great stories like that story could have. We have been saved by some angels, by some heroes that we just met once in our, our life. And I think that's the power of the solidarity and the humanity is still alive out there. They're like my family. Every person cannot have this opportunity in their life. Yeah. Solidarity is pretty big, especially in the mountain community. It's like huge. As these guys did to us, we're gonna pass it on. We're just gonna, not gonna stick to it. Maybe I'm not back in my country, but I will do whatever it takes to help the youngsters back in my country to bring change. Maybe not now, maybe not in a while, but one day I'll be back. Thank you. You did an amazing thing, honestly. It's a Thank you for sharing the story. So you want me to speak to the camera about that day? Well, I guess it's pretty amazing to, to see where a sport of snowboarding or skiing in my case can take you and the people you can meet. Um, let's say it was quite a lesson in courage and commitment and fortitude. Um, and a lot of empathy on the part of Victor and a lot of other people. It's a pretty inspiring story, it's inspiring to me, and I hope it's inspiring to people who watch. And to be honest, I feel a little unworthy of adding much more, because their story should speak for itself. Thanks.